Well, I'll tell you, this so far, uh, I can't tell you, it's been a very emotional experience for me. We just flew in from New York to the Schenectady Airport, and then we drove up, stopped at my father's grave, stopped at by Eagle Street, where I was born, and saw so many people that I remember. It was very, very moving. People that have been nice to my father, people who have been nice to my six sisters, people who have been nice to me. And of course, to be here in what is now the, the city hall, this was the Sanford Mansion. And I remember as a kid passing this place, and looking at this place and wondering, who are the Sanford? They were the Sanford Conference. What a beautiful home this is. And then years passed, and I was in, then making movies in Hollywood, and I get a phone call from a Mrs. Sanford, and she says, I'm throwing a surprise party for my husband, Laddie. And she says, I know you and Laddie have so much in common. <laughs> you, both, you both come from Amsterdam. And I didn't want to tell her that I never met a Sanford all the time I was in Amsterdam. <laughs> so finally that night went to this big, elegant party, and I met a Sanford. And I thought it took a long time from passing by the Sanford mansion to finally meet a Sanford. But what is really nice, I tell you, is coming back home and feeling the warmth of people that I've known, people that I've played with. It really was very, very exciting, and I'm very, very pleased uh, that the mayor, uh, Vila, who came to greet me, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed with the town. I'm impressed with how clean it is. I'm impressed I went by Tom Constantino's factory, how, how beautiful it is. The whole town's beautiful. Douglas, how did East End look to you? East End, I want to tell you, has gotten to be a pussycat. <laughs> East End has changed. When I was there, see, my, when I'd come back from college, my dad, Harry, would take me to all the saloons. Bodgies, it's gone. Shaughnessy's, it's gone. But I was glad to see that there was the DiCaprio Diners and Carmel's Diners. When Carmel's, I think, is, 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 is about gone. But what was very moving to me, you see, my father used to go to DiCaprio's diner. He had the horse and wagon outside, and then he, then he always got into an argument. He got mad at them, then he went to Carmel's diner, right next door. <laughs> then he got mad at them, then he would go back to DiCaprio's. <laughs> so over the years, he went back and forth between those two diners. Oh, spent, my dad spent a lot of time there. Really, really nice uh, to be here. Are there any questions anyone would like to ask me? I'd be delighted to. Yes. You described your story as the American dream come true. Could you elaborate a little on that? Well, I think the way I look at it, uh, my coming here today is, is not so much a tribute to me. It's really it is a tribute to our American way of life. And it just reaffirms what I have learned through the years, that it can only happen here. I've traveled all over the world since I lived at 46 Eagle Street. I've traveled to many countries. I've spoken to university students through interpreters. I've spoken to them in French, in Italian, in German. And I've talked to them about my life and what happened to me as showing them a way of what happens in our country. And the fact that on Eagle Street, this was like a United Nations. You, know, you had the Crescettis and the Naples and the Allens and the Cudmores and the, and the uh, Rimkunis, who's, uh, you know, uh, Steve Rimkunis, who was, uh, so, had a garage there, one of the first garages on Eagle Street was so good to my father. And I just went over there on Eagle Street and saw his son, Stanley, who looks a lot like Steve. He's taller, bigger. But uh, those were precious moments, because when we lived on Eagle Street, and people who came from Lithuania and Poland and Germany and, and Russia, as my parents did, and all these different places, all were immigrants. And here we were, all in this little street, and somehow we survived. And you come back, and you see this affection. So this is America. I mean, you have a chance. You have a chance. Uh, my parents couldn't read or write. 
I was able, I went through the Fourth Ward School, doesn't exist anymore, Wilbur Lynch, St. Lawrence University, American Academy of Dramatic Arts. And finally, I was able to go into the line of work that I wanted to do. Now, if my parents had missed the boat, <laughs> I'd be in a hell of a mess now. <laughs> you know, I'd probably be, you know, a muzhik in, in, in Russia. But uh, this is, you know, we take it for granted. We take for granted the precious thing that we have in America. Just as I took for granted, uh, when I was, came down here, even as we were flying in, uh, I looked and I forget, my God, how beautiful the Mohawk Valley is. I've been all over the world. You know, I've seen the beauties of Switzerland and the beauties of France and Germany and England and China and Russia. I've been to a lot of places. But this Mohawk Valley is really beautiful. And I thought, you know, I didn't realize that. Of course, when I was a kid, I was so anxious to get out of Amsterdam and go, go off someplace and, and do things. So really, coming back is a tribute to America, to what we represent. And it's the things that we have to constantly remind ourselves, because it's things that can be easily forgotten. Because I know that my mother, God rest her soul, used to sit on that porch sometimes and just say to me, oh, America, such a wonderful land. And uh, I remembered that, those things, and that's why in a small way I have tried to do something for my country, because I think my country has done uh, so much for me.